Well, I'm with Andrew Bentley and we're outside uh, Windsor Road Post Office. We're not talking about that, actually. We're talking about the uh, property next door. This is planning, this is parking, this is all the nightmares that everywhere in a Douglas particularly has. And, and you're raising a problem because that is a derelict building, I understand, and things want to be done to it. Yes, Paul. Well, to start, welcome to uh, Parking Zone W in right in the heart of Derby Ward and in the Douglas. And uh, yes, we have a planning application for this building here, which, as you can see, is in a very poor state of affairs. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, the planning application is to convert a former boarding house into a nine-bedroom house in multiple occupation. Now, details of that maybe we'll get on to later, but the important thing about a nine-bedroom um, house in multiple occupation is that this one can be big enough to accommodate 18 people. Oh, right. And 18 adults are all entitled, if they have cars, to 18 parking permits. Now, you're in an area, parking zone W, uh, this area, according to the 2013 parking survey, actually has a capacity of 121 parking spaces. And this building, if it was to go to its legal maximum, would be about 15% of the total parking capacity of the whole zone. Right. Um, and as you can see, just looking around the area, we're already at capacity here. I, I went around a few times myself just to do this interview. Um, this is a double-edged sword, though, right? You want, you want regeneration. You need... That property's obviously got to do something with it. Um, you know, how do you please anybody on this one, really? It's a really difficult one. Uh, you look at it, you couldn't turn it into offices. Um, there's no demand for offices. There's no demand for a hotel here. So you're kind of left with three options. The single-family dwelling. Well, it, the building has 11 bedrooms. Wow. No family needs 11 bedrooms. So the obvious ones are flats or a house in a multiple occupation. And for flats... You know, the conversion rate for flats now that we have the current regulations for sprinklers, fireproofing, acoustic, thermal requirements, you're talking a thousand pounds a square meter and it takes it to a, a level where it's almost prohibitive, which means the default remaining uh, possible use for it is a house in multiple occupation. Um, and it, it fills part of the market, but it does cause problems with the neighbours and it's something that I do hear regularly in the area. I mean if you speak to the people in the area the top three concerns of the residents here are parking, parking yeah. and parking. But, I mean other buildings I don't know but are, are they also flats? I mean there's quite a lot of flats in this whole area. This, anyway. this area is, is a, has quite a mixture. I mean what you'll see is... All conversions from originally boarding homes wasn't it? Well in Dalton Street you, some are flats, most are houses mm. but some of these side streets you'll find a lot of them are three stories high and have all been converted to flats. Yeah. Um, many of them sort of 20, 30 years ago and you will get a lot of people saying that part of the problem for the parking problems in this area is the conversion of houses into flats, which, you know, it is intuitive to think that, and it, there's probably some truth in it, but when you actually look at the statistics between 1996 and the 2016 census, the number of converted buildings, or the number of flats and converted buildings across the whole of Douglas is 140 flats. It's, it's not what causes the parking problems. Okay, but what do the planners say about this? I mean, there must be a decision that they can take on not allowing so many people living there, I guess. Is that in the system or is it something that's not clear? I've spoken to the planners, I've spoken to the Chief Secretary's office, I've spoken to the DOI. Um, yeah, the planners, they're restricted on what they can do. They can only interpret the policies that have been through Timwald. Uh, the DOI do have the power to do something. They can issue an order. Uh, the problem is that they don't want to just do it on an ad hoc basis. They want to do it as part of a policy. And the problem is that the policy here is very old. It's, it's going back to the 90s when people... It was all dealt to deal with people who were commuting into Douglas and parking in the area and residents couldn't find anywhere. The problems today have gone beyond that. It's more about residents and other residents. There's, there's too many cars and this is the result of 30 years of planning policy of building sources of employment on the periphery of the town which has generated more and more need for cars. So the solution, I mean, it doesn't sound to be like one, but what would you think is the best option? Well, we know that there's a parking strategy coming. The DOI have done this, um, and, and we know it's underway, but we need it to be joined up. We need it to be tied to the parking, to the planning process, because at the moment, buildings are getting planning permission on a theoretical use of parking. They'll say, this, this building's being turned into three flats, it's close to the bus stop, it's close to shops, therefore it only needs three parking spaces. Well, if planning, planning permission is granted on that basis, 
then let's restrict the number of parking permits available to that. And when you move into that house, either as a renter or a purchaser, it's there in your contract or in your deeds that you know that you will only be entitled to one parking permit, just yeah. like you know that, that you're getting a house in a parking That's not a vote winner, that's, that's a tough call because nobody wants to not have their car outside, of course. Well, for the moment, I'm saying that uh, it's a question of the newcomers into the area come in, eyes wide open, like they know they're walking into a flood risk zone or a conservation area or any other thing. They live in the TT course. Yeah, yes, yeah, nice. you know, eyes wide open, <laughs> yeah, buyer yeah. beware, you know. Um, but we've got to do something because when you actually speak to people here, you know, th- there is a... Everyone has a solution that suits you know, them, yeah, yeah obviously. Um, but there is generally a common theme that most people want some form of control, some sort of order. And th- at the moment, it's, it's market forces, it's a free-for-all, it's survival of the fittest. Yeah.